would please join with me in the call to worship. When the world works to divide us by color, creed, and status, come, Holy Spirit, make us one. When the world calls us orphaned, come, Holy Spirit, make us family. When the world leads us astray, come, Holy Spirit, call us home. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. This morning, Pastor Rick and his family are on vacation, so we want to pray for him and his family for rest and renewal, and so let us now go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We praise you in your sanctuary. Lord, we praise you in your mighty heaven. Lord, we praise you for your power and your greatness. Lord, we praise you with music and song. Lord, we praise you with our whole breath. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's great to see you in worship this morning. And I know that many of you received an email this last week that uh, the husband of our, our director of finance and business, Eileen Winkle, Ben Winkle, had to have some emergency surgery this last week. In addition to that, Eileen has been suffering with COVID and has been out of the office all this last week. She continues to suffer with COVID, and Ben will have to, is still in the hospital at St. Joseph's and will still have to have more surgery this coming week. So we're asking that you take time this week to remember them in prayer, both of them, as they continue to try to uh, deal with these health issues, and we're just praying that she's going to be back in the office with us as soon as possible. Our opening hymn this morning is number 577, God of Grace. And God of glory, on thy people, pour thy power. Will you stand? We'll sing together. in our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh. 
to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. My name is Will Pepper. I'm the Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries. Just have a few announcements for you this morning. But first, I'd like to welcome you if you are here in person or joining us online. Welcome. If you'll look with me in your bulletin, you'll see there is the More Power to You Worship and Arts Camp coming up. And you'll want to go to the website and sign up for that. As well as in August 1st through the 5th, there's the VBS. And also, you can sign up for that at the website. Let's see. Also, uh, July 3rd, there is the ping pong tournament that goes to support the, the food bank. The, um, is it the food pantry? Church pantry. Thank you. And it's $10 to enter there. There is also an announcement in regard to next Sunday. Yes, next Sunday morning. I know. We Methodists have all of our lives thought that the only time we could take communion was on the first Sunday of the month. You know, that's how we've always done things. But you know what? There's not a law that says we can't take communion anytime. So next Sunday, we're not going to take communion. We're going to take it the second Sunday of this month because next week, we're going to have Patriotic Sunday as we celebrate our freedom to, to worship and to have faith in place where we, where we wish in this country. It's Patriotic Sunday. The choir will be the message next week with music, with special instrumentalists, special soloists, and I hope that you will invite someone to be here at either 8.30 or 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary to be a part of that. So that's the Patriotic Sunday's next Sunday, and hope that you'll be with us. Thank you. Just recently, the youth had an opportunity to go out and do some mission work and I'd like to invite Nina to come forward to say a couple of things about that. Um, hi. Um, so two weeks ago, we were able to take a four-day trip um, just into the town to um, help people in our community with household upkeep. We were able to bless Miss Reed with repainting her porch and fence posts in the front yard, and we re rebuilt the back wall and put in a new landing and two new doors. While we were rebuilding our home, we were, we were able to build stronger relationships with our youth group and with God. We have a short video to show of the week. i 
church of mission, right? Amen. The Mexico mission trip was last week, and they are they arrived safely back on Friday, and so we've got a video that shows about that too. Cameron. I am the way, Jesus says. Follow me. The kingdom of God is at hand, already in your midst. It's not up in the air. It's under your feet and clasped in your grip. As his disciples, we are told if we keep quiet, the stones will cry. Following him is not an easy path, but it's true. Go to the village ahead of you, he commands us. There you will find what was prepared in advance for you to do. If anyone questions you, assure them, the Lord is my shepherd. I can't see around the bend, but he can. He's the potter, and I'm the clay. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And just as the earth and sky and everything God made speaks of his invisible qualities, eternal power, and divine nature, here we place our Ebenezer, so all men, women, and children have no excuse for not knowing God. you all to stand and welcome one another to worship, and I want to invite the children forward for their special time. that are sitting now to go ahead and bookmark Ecclesiastes 1 and Haggai chapter 1 in your Bibles or your pew Bibles because you'll need it later. I need all of you to stand up right here and I want you to line up shoulder to shoulder with me here this way. Come stand right there. Stand shoulder to shoulder to one another. All right, Cameron, come here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. All right, Miss Karen, come here. Will, come here. All right, Harvard and and Braylon, come here. Go hand one of these to every person over there. Y'all are gonna be. Y'all have to figure out what this name is that they're gonna be holding. Yes. All right. Hold up your letter so we can see it. Let's scoot down a little bit. Hannah, move to like right here. All right, Maggie, move right here. Everyone, scoot down this way. All right, is that all? All right, hold up the letter so everybody can see them. All right, you five and Nina, this is one person's name. What is it? It, it's scrambled, by the way. <laughs> Got any guesses? I will give you a hint. I don't know if this will help. There's an actor in Hollywood who his name can be found in this name. This is 18 letters. 
All right, we're, we're going to move along because I don't think y'all are going to get it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Who's got an M? Come here, Reagan. All right, everybody scoot down a little bit more. Reagan, you get, you get in front. Hold up your letter so I can see it. Who's got an A? James, come stand next to Reagan. Everybody scoot down. Who's got, I'm going to come to you in a minute. Hold on, Cecilia, hold on. Hold on, no, hold on, you got to help me out here, Chris, like, right here. All right, Will, you're good, you got an H, that's where you need to be. Who's got an E? Come on down here, Hannah. All right, Henry and everybody else, scoot down a little bit. Who's got an R? John Wilson, come right here, Hannah. You stand right next to, to Hannah. All right, so I've given you, hold up your letters, I've given you the five, five first letters. What's the name? The first five are. You need more letters? I'll give you some more. Who's got the S? Come over here, Maggie. Oh, no, Lauren, you get back over there. All right, right here, Maggie, right here. And Henry, you're in the right spot with the H. I need an A. Ryland, come here. Well, I don't need you yet. All right, what do you think? Who's got an L? You have an L? All right, right here. Scoot down a little bit. Y'all scoot down. Who's got another A? Come here, Annabelle. Come stand right by your brother. What is he holding? Yep. Who's got another L? Hold on. You from Reagan to Annabelle. Hold up your letters real high. How many of you have heard of this name before? Okay. Hold on to it. Now we need that L. Switch places with William. Okay. Now we need an H. Right here. An A. Rebecca, come right here. An S. Right here. An H. Right here. A B. An A. Cecilia, right here. And... Nolan, you'll be the very end with the Z. You are all familiar with this name, yes? <laughs> Hold it up real high so they can see. All right. It is the longest name in the Bible, Mer Shalal Hash Baz. Y'all all knew that, right? Y'all got it. Okay. Mer Shalal Hash Baz. What a name. How many of you have ever had to fill in your name on a Scantron before? How would you like to fill in this one? Okay. Uh, Cameron, get all these letters for me, please. Get all that. All right, then everybody else come sit back over here. Mayor Shalal Hashbaz. What did I do with my Bible? I put it down somewhere. So if you're going to have a name like that, you better hope that it has a meaning or a purpose. And it does have a meaning. Mayor Shalal Hashbaz was the son of Isaiah the prophet. And his name, you would think it means something wonderful, right? Like hope and peace. His name means quickly to the plunder. Quickly to the plunder. What if your parents named you that? Quickly to the plunder, right? It'd be like if they named you, hey, looter. Looter, right? But that's what they named him because it would foreshadow Samaria being plundered and loot looted. But that's not a great name to have. But there, in the Bible, there are many names that are named, people are named because of the purpose or what happened to them. Moses means drew out of the water because Moses was put in the water by his mother and he was taken out of it. Jesus means Lord saves. Now God knows you by name and calls you by name, but it may not be Adam or Henry or Annabelle. It may be, he may be calling you by your purpose, which I don't know what that is. I don't know what he has for you, but I do know that we all have one purpose that we have in common, and it is our first purpose in life, and that is to love and worship 
God. So no matter what name your parents gave to you, you should thank God your name is not Mayor Shalal Hashbaz, but know that God calls you by name and he has a purpose for you. And my verse comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you for calling us by our name. Thank you for claiming us as yours. In your name we pray. Amen. You know they call that kid Baz. They certainly did not go around calling him by that name all the time. One of the things that uh, we're called to as God's people is to unify together so that we might bring the kingdom of God upon the earth. And this morning we're going to sing three hymns that talk about our unity in Christ talk about our calling to be unified as God's people. Uh, it's hard to, to find that unity these days, but these hymns are a reminder that that is exactly, as Christian people, what we're called to be about. The first one, Christian people sing together, then we are one in the bond of love, and finally, how can we name love? And I'm going to ask you to stand, we'll sing together. <laughs>
join me in this offertory prayer. Father, we thank you so much for all that you do. We thank you for your presence. Father, we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with us and move among us, Lord. You are the great giver. And now, Lord, we ask that you bless these tithes and offerings, Lord. Your word tells us that you love a cheerful giver. And Father, may we give and worship to you. And Father, help us always to remember the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, there are one people, and they, have, they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not, be, not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off the buildings of the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to thank Pastor Rick for giving me the opportunity to preach this morning, and I consider it an honor every time he does. And so, let's now go to God in prayer. Dear God, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our first hour today, we're going to be going through the book of Genesis to Ecclesiastes to Haggai to Matthew, so buckle up. This next week, I will be preaching at Lakeview in the elementary camp, and the theme is, Hello, My Name Is, and it focuses on names, their meanings, and being called by your name. And I appreciate Jeff having his children's sermon go along with my sermon. It was very thoughtful of him. He does a good job. I love that guy. So when Pastor Rick asked me to preach, uh, I told him I would go along with that theme. But for a while, I've also wanted to do a sermon about technology and faith. So the story of the Tower of Babel accomplishes both of those things. So today, we're going to start with a name. Nimrod. How many of you have ever been called a Nimrod? Raise your hand. It's not a very great name to be called, is it? Well, at one time, it could have been a great name to be called. Because Nimrod was the great-grandson of Noah. And he was called Nimrod. He was a mighty hunter, great warrior. Not a bad thing to be called. So how did we get from a mighty hunter, a mighty warrior, to it being an insult for doing something that's not so smart? Does anybody know the answer? Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny called Elmer Fudd a Nimrod. Sarcastically, because Elmer Fudd was what? A hunter. What did he hunt? Wabbits. That's right. So because Bugs Bunny used it sarcastically, oh, you're a great hunter, the great Nimrod, a lot of people did not get the biblical meaning of this, and they started using it as an insult. What a Nimrod. So that's where we get it, and it stuck. But Nimrod was a ruler. And one of the places he led his people to was Shinar. And we need to remember that after Noah and his family got off the ark, God commanded them to be fruitful and multiply on the earth and increase upon it. God wanted his people to spread out on his creation. But when the people reached the plain of Shinar, they settled there. They said, come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Well, that's kind of what God wanted you. He wanted you to spread out on his creation. So they're not interested in following God's commands. They don't want to move out. They want to move up. They built themselves up up to make a name for themselves they didn't need God to reach the heavens so the tower becomes a 
symbol for a self-centered and self-focused life, not one centered on God and his commands. So God responded, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is, was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Babel. Let's make a name for ourselves. Do we see this trend today, or is this something that is just from long ago? A need to build ourselves up, to make our name a name for ourselves in a self-focused life. Do you see the tower being built today? The Tower of Babel? I think if you can't see it, you're blind. Our tower is built with this. It's technology. It's social media. We use technology and social media to make a name for ourselves. You know, there's nothing that we can't do with, on our phones today. There's nothing we can't accomplish on our phones. As a matter of fact, I think we should stop calling it a phone because what we do on it is so unlike a phone that it shouldn't be called that. I think talking to people on the phone is probably a small percentage of what younger generations actually do with this device. But we build ourselves up on social media, posting only the best parts of our lives. And there are those who build themselves up by tearing others down on social media. And as I got to this part at the 830 service, I had a notification pop up that showed me my weekly screen time. Do y'all get those messages? And it said my screen time was up 15% from last week. So thank you, God, for convicting me. But we, we can go to our phones and forget about our problems, looking at other people's lives. We can binge watch television shows on our phones. Can you imagine that 30 years ago if someone told you, hey, one day you're going to watch TV on your phone and you're going to watch a lot of it? I don't think you're going to, no, that can't be right. We can get on the next door app and complain about our HOA. Even though your HOA leadership is trying their very best. For you and me, bud. We get online because we want to find voices that agree with ours, and you can find an opinion on anything and everything on both sides of the issue when you get online. You even have people that make issues of stuff so that they can show their righteous anger. But being angry isn't righteous. Living a holy life is what makes you righteous. Your response to your anger is what can make you righteous. Just being mad about something does not make you righteous. You ever get on Facebook or Twitter just to check in, see what's going on in the world, then you get upset by what you've read? Is this not Babel? The meaning of Babel is a confused noise made by a number of voices. Social media is Babel. But this technology wasn't created for this purpose to divide people, but it's evolved into that because we are sinful beings. How much time have you wasted on social media? Scrolling, scrolling through people's lives and the junk, and then you find you've been on it maybe an hour, like, what have I been doing? Do your children watch videos on YouTube of other children opening up toy packages and watching them play with the toys? I remember when my kids were doing that, and I was like, what are you doing? You're watching kids play with toys? Go play.
play with toys yourselves. And the sad part is, the people that are putting those videos on YouTube are making money from it. The millions of views these people are getting paid for. It's technology. We could use it to do good things, but we use it to fight, to pass time, to hear the viewpoint we want to hear, to make a name for ourselves. You know, my first semester of college, I took a philosophy class, and it was called Technology and Human Values. And we were to discuss the moral challenges of technology in the day. And do any of you remember the big debate that was going on around that time? It was in 1997, the fall of 97. How many of you remember who this is? You might know the name of this sheep. Dolly, that's right, the first cloned sheep. So we debated the morality of cloning animals and then people. We were saying back then, oh, in 20 years, they're going to be cloning people. Why do we need to clone people? Is your drive home not packed enough already? Why do we need to clone sheep? Unless it's about, look what I can do. Look how great I am. I just made a sheep. Now, I'm not a Luddite, but technology and the need to make a name for ourselves has taken away our focus from the kingdom of God. But we have this need to be someone. How many of you have ever driven under this overpass on I-45 in Houston and see, seen this sign? How many of you have seen it? Be someone. Now, in a sermon about getting off technology, I'm going to tell you to go online later and look about the movement behind this graffiti. Because it has been painted over the past few years a couple of times with other graffiti and people get mad. How dare you graffiti over our graffiti of the awesome message of be someone. They get offended. I love this graffiti. Don't graffiti over my graffiti. Every time I drive under this, I think of Forrest Gump looking at it and go, well, aren't I going to be me? Be someone. What does that mean? Why is it so hard for us to follow Paul's advice from 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12, when he says, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. How would you like to post that on social media today? Mind your own business. We instead have a need to find acceptance and babble through social media instead of finding acceptance in the Savior who loves us. God scattered the people and confused their language because he did not like where they were going. And the tower went unfinished. How embarrassing must that have been for those that were still staying there. They were, they were scattered, but those still there to have to look at the unfinished tower that they built. Isn't an unfinished tower the things that we spend our time on today? The things that are not of God, the things that we try to make a name for ourselves, that will get us nowhere. It's like telling everyone you're the greatest ping pong player and then never winning the tournament for eight years. The tournament that you started. I did win last year, but it took me a while. How embarrassing must it be when you want to have a name for yourself and you don't live up to that? It's so unfinished because you're doing it without God. If you bookmark Ecclesiastes, turn to that, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We're going to read it because the things that we do here on earth in Ecclesiastes, it's called things that under the sun. To me, that is the things that we do without God. And it says, the words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher.
teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What an uplifting book of the Bible so far. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done there again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. No one remembers the former generations, and even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. It may sound tough to hear that when what you do on earth is meaningless, but remember, it's the stuff that you do that is not of God. Maybe you build a business, you make a good name, but once you're gone, then what? What happens to that business? Maybe you sell it, maybe it's squandered by the next generation. Your tower is unfinished. So what gives us meaning? The kingdom of God. A kingdom that you have a place in because of Jesus Christ. When you get baptized, you join God's team. You put on his jersey. But you still have to decide, are you going to play for the name on the front or the name on the back of the jersey? How many of you have ever been on a team, whether it be for sports or a school project, where someone didn't pull their weight? Maybe they missed practice for one reason or another, or when it came time to work on the project for school, they didn't do what they were supposed to do, so you had to do it for them. But they still show up on game day, don't they? They still show up for the presentation in class. Are we truly playing for the name on the front of the jersey, God's kingdom, or are we playing for the name on the back, our name? Now, last week, I was given a baseball jersey with FUMC Brian on the front and Hobbs on the back with the number 20 for the 20 years I've been in the job, and it's an awesome jersey. But my hope is that I'm playing for that name on the front, that when Hobbs gets taken off the jersey one day, when I'm no longer here, that the name on the front continues in my absence. I don't want the person who follows me to have nothing to continue on with. I want them to succeed. I don't care if my ping pong victories are remembered or not, but I want that name on the front to continue on and on. All right, now if you have the book of Haggai bookmarked, I want you to turn to there, to chapter one. There's only two chapters. Many of you may know that this is my favorite book of the Bible. Haggai is one of the minor prophets. It takes place at the end of the exile of the Jews. They were given permission to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild, rebuild the temple. They laid the foundation of the temple. They were on fire for God. We're no longer in captivity. Yes, let's rebuild this temple. Oh, wait a minute. Let me build my own house. So chapter 1, verse, starting with verse 2, this is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now 
this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Was this written this week? And then skip down to the second part of verse 9. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Busy making a name for ourselves. What happened to their fire? They just got back from captivity, from exile. They were on fire. And then that self-centered life came calling. But they heeded the word of Haggai the prophet. They went back to work on the temple and finished it. And if you look in verse 13, it says, Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jezadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. He stirred up their spirit. Well, where is our fire? We have been freed from captivity. We were once slaves to sin, stuck in a separation from God because of our sin. But God, through his righteousness, sent his son, Jesus, to earth to show us the way. He showed us how we should love and live. He showed us how to reach not the heavens, but heaven through him, the one way, the truth, and the life. And because of my sin and yours, a sacrifice was needed for atonement. And Jesus willingly gave up his life on the cross so that we may be saved from our sins. The name of Jesus means Lord, the Lord saves. But the good news doesn't stop there. Jesus had victory over death through the resurrection and gave us new life through him. We will one day be resurrected because of the name of Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. He ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and he intercedes on our behalf. And it ends with him coming back. And we are waiting on that glorious day, the second coming of Christ, where he will judge the quick, the living, and the dead. We don't know when that day is coming, but we know it will come like a thief in the night. We know that we will be recognized by our fruit. And I'm not saying we will be saved by good works, but I'm saying that building up the kingdom of God comes from a strong faith. It is the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, Jesus is going to be looking for people who are playing for the name on the front of the jersey, for God's kingdom. Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Your worries will be taken away. Your need to make a name for yourself, to do all the meaningless things that we do. Let's ask in everything that we do how it glorifies God, whether it be technology, work, our hobbies, or our family. Be a player on the team that shows up for practice, that makes time for God's word every day. A player that puts God first in your schedule and your budget. And a player that lifts other teammates up when they are feeling weak. Making a name for ourselves is meaningless. Living for the name of Jesus is eternal. Today, ask God to stir up your spirit. The spirit of our church. The spirit of our nation and our world as we work to have his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 555. Forward through the ages. The second verse, I think, says exactly what, uh, what Jeff has tried to
impart to us today. The second verse reads, Wider grows the kingdom, reign of love and light. For it we must labor till our faith is sight. Prophets have proclaimed it, martyrs testified, poets sung its glory, heroes for it died. Forward through the ages, in unbroken line, move the faithful spirits back to Paul divine. That's our call, is to move the spirit onward. Will you stand as we sing together 555? <laughs> these doors today, let us ask God to stir our spirit and stir the spirit of our church to go out and work for his kingdom. Amen. Our mission is to love, witness, and serve.